Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this first session after your mid-semester examinations. I hope the examinations uh, was good, and uh, I think a couple of you are still to write uh, the exam, so you would be taking the makeup paper. Uh, today, Uh, am I not audible? I'm getting message that I'm not audible. Where? Oh, okay. 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 Um. Uh, uh, because some of you are still to write the mid-semester examination, I will not be starting with the design patterns today because that's an important topic. So we will uh, start in the next session. To primarily in the first half, I have planned some lectures, slides for you on visibility, and then we'll take a look at the package diagram. Uh, the second half of the lecture, uh, I would like to take up questions uh, regarding your uh, uh, assignment or the assignment that has been circulated. Uh, I'm getting a lot of mails from uh, so many students regarding groups, etc. So in the second half, I will take up all those questions. So you will be your questions in the chat and then I'll try and answer that. I right? will not start with that. Let us start with the session today, and then we'll take up that later, right? Uh, okay. So to see about what visibility. So this was uh, one topic in lecture five, five point one. Uh, we did not cover before the mid semester. So five point one and five point three. Mid visibility is 5.1 and 5.3 is package diagrams is what we're going to take a look at today. So we'll let and what is visibility? Visibility is the ability of one object to see or have reference to another object. Right. So an object will be able to uh, send messages or access another object only if the other object is visible to the first object. There are four common ways in which visibility can be achieved from object A to object B. Right? We'll see today what are these four ways in which visibility can be achieved. The first is called attribute visibility. Then there's parameter visibility, focal visibility, and global visibility. Right? So we'll see each of these visibility in detail in the upcoming slides and then understand how these can be achieved. Okay. Starting with attribute visibility, and visibility from A to B exists when B is an attribute of A, right? So if B is attribute of A, then attribute visibility exists from B to A, from A to B, okay? So if B is an attribute, B is the attribute and A is the class, if B is an attribute of A, then attribute visibility exists from A to B. Let's understand this uh, with an example. Example. Uh, here an example, it says class register. So register is my class. Right? And it has an attribute of class product lock. Right. As an attribute of class product catalog, so there is an attribute visibility from A to B. In this case, B is the product catalog because object of B exists as an attribute inside the class 
class A. Right? So there is attribute visibility from A to B. This kind of visibility is quite uh, described as a permanent visibility. And this visibility exists as long as both A and B exist. So as long as A and B exist, this kind of visibility will continue to exist. This attribute visibility is very easy to understand if an object is an attribute or uh, belonging to another class, then they have an attribute visibility relationship amongst each other. Right? Okay, to the next kind of visibility is a parameter visibility. A visibility from A to B exists when B is passed as a parameter to a method of, right? A parameter visibility from A to B exists if B is passed. So B is passed as a parameter to a method of A. Let's understand with this with this example. So uh, this uh, method make line item, right? Method belonging to class A. So let me just write here. But make line item is a method belonging to class A, and And not of, of okay. This an object of product description is passed as a parameter to one of the method of this class A. Right? The third is make line item. Make line item uh, the object of the product description class is passed as a parameter to one of the third of class A. So that is the reason why uh, a parameter visibility is now existing between a class A to the class B. Class A in this case might be register class and class B in our case is the product description class. Right? So directly this description object, this product description object is not an attribute of class A. However, it is visible to class A through parameter visibility. So, for an invocation to make an object method is carried out, this object is passed to this particular method, and this object is visible through uh, parameter visibility to class A. Right? It is easy to convert this parameter visibility to an attribute visibility, right? Uh, you might define here an attribute uh, of description class, uh, product description class in class A, and then using this parameter, the incoming parameter, assign the value of the, uh, of the incoming object to the attribute existing inside the class A, right? We can convert, if required, parameter visibility can also be used to convert or to assign value to an existing attribute and convert parameter visibility into attribute visibility as well, right? This is the way uh, objects might be visible to each other through the visibility relationship. To, uh, okay, there's a question. Does that mean that attribute visibility has more precedence over parameter visibility? I do not uh, understand if there would be a question of parameter of precedence in case of parameter visibility or attribute visibility. Yeah, it is the scope rules that would work here. Right. So, in case of parameter visibility, the parameter visibility only exists within the method. Right. Wherever in the method the parameter is, uh, wherever in this method, say for example, in the make line item, this uh, object of product description is visible. However, it will not be visible in the entire class. 
right? Where in case of attribute visibility, if an object of product description exists inside class as an attribute of the class, it will be visible to all the objects, all the methods inside that class, right? So we would not talk in terms of precedence in case of visibility, but we usually talk in terms of scope in case of visibility. The parameter in case of parameter visibility, it's quite clear that it's uh, that particular incoming parameter is only visible inside the scope of that method. Right? Right? Uh, let's move to local visibility. Now, local visibility from A to B exists. When B is declared as a local object within a method of A, right? When B is declared as a local object within a method of A. Let's take this example to understand what we mean by local visibility. Taking the example of the make line item, the make line item which belongs to say class A. A description object is passed, right? There is parameter visibility of the product description object. Additionally, the incoming value, ESC object, which is of type product description, this particular value is being used to initialize a local variable of that same class, a local object of that same class, and assign the value to that particular object, right? So, in this case, there's a local visibility of the description object. The description object can be used within the scope of this method only to refer to the uh, objects of class product description. Right? There is a local visibility in this particular case. This kind of visibility persists only within the scope of the method. How is this particular product description object, which is describing description, right? This was declared as an attribute of class A, and this same assignment was done here, then it would be changing uh, the variability into attribute visibility. Right? I'll take up a few questions that are coming in. Okay, it's the same question. Uh, uh, so we uh, discuss about the visibility. We talk about the visibility in terms of scope of the visibility. So either it's uh, visible in the end in the scope of the method, or is it visible in the scope of the class? Right. Okay. Let's move ahead. The next visibility, in fact, kind of visibility is the global visibility. Now, the global visibility uh, from A to B exists when B is global to A. So, when B exists in a global sense to A, then a global visibility exists from A to B. This of visibility is permanent visibility, right? And this exists uh, as long as both A and B. B exists. Uh, in Java, uh, the concept of global variables does not exist, right? So we have the concept of global variables existing only in C++. So, so there we can achieve global visibility through de declaring by declaration of, of global variables, right? Whereas in Java, since the concept of global variables don't uh, does not exist. That uh, another way to achieve global visibility is through the use of a singleton pattern, right? So singleton pattern is a pattern which helps us to, in a way, make a particular class globally visible to all the other classes, right? 
uh, this singleton pattern is what we're going to have a look at in the next uh, session where we're going to start with design patterns and we will start with the gang of four patterns and the first pattern that we'll have a look at will be the singleton pattern right so in that case we'll be able to understand how global visibility is achieved in java where we know that in c++ global uh, visibility can easily achieved by designing global variables right uh, okay now there's a question where is the visibility visibility concept we used diagram so the reason for covering the visibility concept is that uh, your visibility concept gets used in the class diagrams as well as in the package diagrams right uh, we did cover class diagrams before and in that if you remember we saw four visibility symbols which are used to define visibility uh, of attributes as well as methods right and uh, more we will see in the package diagrams also how the visibility is defined right but altogether uh, the in there are kind of four visibility patterns that uh, are usually thought of and which has discussed are the attribute visibility the parameter visibility the local and the global visibility right it is necessary that the objects are visible to each other because the objects need to interact with each other and this interaction is easily uh, understood with the help of the sequence diagrams right so if an object is not visible to the other object through any kind any particular type of visibility then particular object will not be able to send across messages to the other object right i'll take questions uh, some questions uh, coming up regarding the assignments i'll take up after finishing the package diagrams it's a small portion so let us first start with the package diagrams please don't worry about the assignments we'll discuss it over that right? i'll give a quick overview of the assignment also so <clears throat> start with the package diagrams uh, i would not say it's a very important topic but i would not like to skip it also right uh, a package diagram is in space you group together elements that are semantically related to each other right usually packages are used to group classes that are related to each other we would have seen that in java a directory structure is used to represent uh, these packages uh, or the grouping of classes and uh, package concept is very much uh, uh, extensively used in java where you would see similar uh, classes involved or um, out related tasks are grouped in, into same package right so it's org dot something dot something right so that's the way the packages are named natively if you see the storage the way these packages are stored in java you would find that they are stored as directory structures right structures and then each structure within itself has the required uh, java files as well as the class files being placed uh, at the lowest levels or be at the intermediate levels right uh, so these packages they are designed uh, a to group related elements together uh, this helps us to uh, visualize the entire system at a high level right uh, grouping together related classes not only helps in Uh, understanding not only helps in using them right it also helps in distributing and packaging them and so hence and moreover okay uh, there's some question that is there okay uh, there are na certain concepts which are associated with packages so it says owned member of a package should all be packageable elements right 
um, okay, packageable elements. Uh, the the uh, question between the various classes and coupling between the classes should be uh, such that the 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 set belonging to a package should be logically related, right? If that is so, we say that the members are packageable, right? The first that they are doing a related task, they are logically related to each other, right? And they are coupled together with each other. It should not be that uh, they are more involved or there is a lot of interaction that elements of belonging to a particular package are having a lot of interaction with the elements of the other package. If that is so, that means that uh, these elements are not packageable. They cannot be cohesively combined into one package of like-minded classes or like-minded elements, right? Only there are like-minded elements which form a, a strong connected network within themselves they be packaged into one package or one bundle or one grouping. Right? So that is why we say owned members of a package should be packageable elements. And this is what we mean by being packageable, right? So they form a cohesive structure among themselves with least amount of interaction may be required with the external, right? Say, for example, if I have a package which is responsible for rendering the UI of certain uh, tools, right? So this particular package would, should require the help of the classes outside this package. It should be cohesive enough, it should have all the implementation required to render the UI within itself, right? So that is what we mean by the elements should be packageable. Additionally, if a package is removed from the model, all the elements owned by the package will also be removed, right? So, so cohesively bound together with each other that the package moves together with uh, with itself, right? So it takes all of its own members along with it, right? So I like to replace a UI package X with UI package Y. Right, that would change my rendering process, but when I package X, all the files belonging to the UI package X, which are the owned members of the package X, will get removed and completely replaced by the UI package Y. Right, uh, the packages by themselves should also be packageable elements. Right, the package in themselves could also subgroup to form or maybe belonging to high level packages. Any package could also be a member of other packages. And those of you who, who would have been working extensively in Java would be able to see uh, understand the concept of package very easily. So in Java you have um, built packages. There are packages for uh, supporting math utilities, so something like java.math.util or util or something like that, right? So we have classes related to, uh, there are packages which have classes related to all math functions. There are packages which have all the classes related to functions. Right? So that is how the packages are created. Whatever may be your requirement, you would import that particular package. Uh, something I've already tried to uh, discuss, uh, uh, explain initially also, what is the need of packages? The idea is to logically organize classes or code, right? So the more logically you organize the classes into packages, more easy it is for the third person to understand what is the need of this package, right? So the peoples of JDK, they also understood that the uh, uh, that one should uh, package similar uh, classes, execute similar kind of responsibility into one package. So this is why they clubbed up uh, um, for 
con consisting of math libraries into one package, history libraries into one package, art libraries into one, etc. Right? So, if for me these packages are easy to understand and make use of, then think about if I'm developing a particular software uh, and a particular Java project, and I want to club up classes. Then have to club up classes into packages or group using uh, integral sense. Right? So you must organize your classes logically so that it becomes easy for the other person to understand uh, reason also why the uh, the particular classes have been clubbed the way they have been clubbed. Right. So it is. It required that you organize your classes into uh, according to similar kind of logic that they might be implementing, right? So logically organize your classes or code. Segregate classes implementing related functionalities into a separate bundle so that they can be easily used and modified, right? You put classes implementing a related functionality into a separate place. This concept of packaging your classes helps to increase the modularity of the system to a very large extent, right? So you have packages uh, being separated out into uh, modules and uh, directory structures uh, clearly organized in the namespace, so it becomes a nice modular structure. You uh, say, example, if you have to test your system, then you test package by package, sub package by package, and it becomes a highly modularized system. Uh, additionally, uh, the packages help you to get a high level overview of your system or the architecture of the system, right? so you can use packages to. Uh, high level design of your system, so you have packages at some vertical layers in which you might do your system, or you have packages at horizontal layers in which you might divide your system. The each package is responsible for carrying out the activities at that particular layer, right? Uh, additionally, you might even come across uh, um, patterns which are uh, uh, used to organize the system requirements. So it is not only the uh, system design that you might package, right? It is also the system requirements that one might package, right? So in case of system requirement packaging, you might be organizing your use case diagrams into certain packages. Right? So these are the use cases which are related to uh, the user interface requirement, so you put them into one package, so and so forth, right? So uh, packaging is uh, can be used to not only uh, depict high-level system design, but also to depict a high-level system requirement specification as well, right? The entire idea is you are trying to group uh, elements right, into Logulated concepts, right? And this is done with the help of something called as packages, right? I just take one or two exam questions that are coming up. Um, so you see me questions about uh, uh, equivalent of packages in. Uh, I am pure Java person, right? So I have no idea what is the equivalent. So it is PKG to be installed uh, uh, in net. You're asking, so uh, the I I am I'm not sure about the ends or the file extensions that are being used in .NET, right? But I can tell you in Java, it is. Uh, it is, it is the final packages. Uh, they are usually named as org or com dot org or something like that, right? But the you can make out uh, uh, the equivalent of it in other languages is that the 
libraries that might exist in the other languages, they, they would be uh, organized together into certain folders or certain uh, uh, zip files or certain, uh, say, jar files, right, which, which can be imported into your current system to provide uh, certain inbuilt functionality, right? So that is what packaging is, right? And it is, those are the inbuilt packages. You can also, in fact, it's a good um, way to organize. It is very good that if you organize the project that you're working on into packages as well. Right? So if you have, uh, a product which has certain uh, clues which are responsible for interacting with the database, then organize them into a separate package. If there are, they are, there are classes which are responsible for rendering the UI to the user, then organize them into a separate package. If there are classes which are, uh, say, for example, doing some calculation intense uh, calculation processing then organize them into separate packages right having packages not only helps the other person to understand your uh, project but it's good for you for one oneself as well as to understand uh, how the uh, various classes are logically related to each other right right uh, okay. I think with that we move it. Uh, that was the need for packages. Uh, packages because packages is a namespace. Elements of related or the same time should have unique names within the enclosing packages, right? So it is very important that. Uh, uh, the elements, right? I would not say classes. So packages might consist of classes or use cases or anything, right? So I would say elements package should have a unique name uh, because they all belong to the same namespace. So there should not be any conflict of names. However, elements belonging to different packages can have the same names, and in that case. Uh, you might, uh, you would be required to refer to the having the same names but belonging to the different packages. You must refer them using the fully qualified names, right? So, uh, what we mean by fully qualified name, you have to uh, require that you must append uh, the package name before the element name in case you want to refer to an element which has the same name uh, as a particular element which is already belonging to your package, right? So you can import other individual members of other packages or all the members of other packages, right? This is one very common thing that we do. So either you can import a particular class from a particular package or you can uh, import all the members of the package, right? But it is always recommended that only if a particular class is, is uh, to be used, then you should not import all the other classes or elements of that other package into your own package, right? Only uh, this will increase the coupling between the two pa packages, right? So in order to lower down the coupling, only import the package packages only import the members of the package that are required to be used within your class, right? And so another uh, important thing about packages, let's uh, quickly see the notations of the package diagrams. Rendered as a tabbed folder, right? So this is how we draw a package. A tab folder, which is drawn as a rectangle with a small attached to the left of the top of the rectangle. Right? So this is how you would draw a package. Uh, within its side, uh, within inside this rectangle, you one is required to write the name of the package, right? So if the members of the package are not shown 
inside the package rectangle, then the name of the package should be placed inside the rectangle. Right? So this is how you would represent a package uh, in which the sub elements or the sub package elements are not represented. In that case, you write the name of the package inside the package made rectangle box. However, if the members of the package are shown within, within the boundaries of the package, right, then the name of the package should be placed on the tab, right? So if it is required that, that you need to present even the sub-elements that belong to this particular package, then you can present each element using a rectangular box like this in the box, and in this case, you have to uh, write the name of the package uh, on the tapped location on top of the rectangle. Right? So this is how you would represent a package. Uh, you can see here inside it consists of two interfaces. Right? This is an example. Inside here you would follow the notations as if it was an in, uh, the notation similar to the one that that we've used in the class diagrams. So if you have a, a interface that is a part of this package, then you would uh, it would be required that, that you use the special symbol interface to represent that this is an interface. If it's a class, no symbol is required, right? <coughs> okay. To represent sub packages in a packages in a package, you can put a sim kind of a symbol, the one that you have used uh, present a package inside here to represent a sub package. Right? So a similar kind of a tab folder can be placed inside this tab folder to represent a sub package. Right? Uh, okay, so this was the notations. There are some more notations. Because <coughs> of the package, uh, can also be shown outside the package, right? Uh, so instead of drawing the members of the package inside the package box, right? So there might be large members and you might not be getting to fit them inside the package box itself, then you can use uh, this particular kind of a symbol to represent a composition, right? In this case, it is called a composition. It's a plus symbol with a circle around it to represent that these elements, these particular elements belong to this particular package, right? So they are the members of this particular package, right? So this this is another alternative notation for representing um, the members of a package instead of inside the main package block, you place them outside the package block. Right? So in this case, if there are hierarchies, if there are inheritance hierarchies, uh, it would be easy to draw using this particular notation. Right? Okay. Uh, I'll take up the next slide. Some notations. Uh, uh, something I discussed. So elements can be referred to within a package using non-qualified names. Right, so you need not use the fully qualified names to refer to the elements belonging to the same package. Or you can avoid using fully qualified names uh, in case of elements belonging to the other packages uh, which do not have name conflict with the elements of the current package. Right. However, if in case there is a name conflict, then you would have to use uh, fully qualified names to refer to the elements of uh, the other package. Right. I am not very sure if you, uh, how many work in uh, Java projects. Right. But uh, um, uh, based on one of my previous experience, uh, there was there was a name conflict which I remember. So there were two projects that uh, I was importing, right? And uh, the simplified name or the same class, a class with the same name existing in both the projects, both the packages, right? So uh, if you've used Eclipse ID, it gives it gives a, a name conflict, right? So it asks 
you which of the particular uh, class is what is are you trying to refer because uh, there are two packages that you have currently imported in your particular uh, class file which have the same uh, file that you are referring to right so at case you have to use a full qualified name which consists of the entire length of the package name to distinguish which is the exact class file that you are referring to at but at this particular time right So uh, let's move ahead. Uh, what is the next? So we'll talk about some visibility notations that can be used in a package diagram. So if an element is owned by a package and has visibility, it can only be public or private. Right? So this is very important to remember that uh, protected and package visibility is not allowed for elements belonging to a particular package. So it is only, it's either visible inside the package, it's not visible outside, or it is visible outside, right? Uh, we are talking at the level uh, of the packages where we are grouping elements together into a package. In that case, the elements are either um, only belonging to that package, not visible outside, or they are visible outside, right? So it's only public and private visibility which is allowed at the package level. Right? And we use the same notations to describe whether uh, it's a uh, public or private visibility. So in say, uh, see for example, in this particular case of a package of a library domain, they like catalog, pattern, library, and account, right? So the first three, the catalog, pattern, and the library, they have uh, public visibility, whereas the account has a private visibility, right? Uh, the visibility of a package element can be indicated by preceding the name of the element by a visibility symbol, which is plus for public and minus for private, right? Uh, the public elements of a package are always accessible outside the package, through the use of qualified names, right? So public variables are visible outside the package. I would not say public variables, sorry. Public elements belonging to a package are visible outside the package through the use of qualified names. Private elements are not visible outside the packages, right? Okay, just one more slide to go. Uh, you need to represent dependencies between the packages. The most common dependency between the packages is the import dependency, right? Uh, one package might import another package, right? That means it imports either one class or a large number of classes belonging to that particular package. Dependency is shown between the packages uh, using the dependency arrows that we even used in the class diagrams. Right? So it's a dotted arrow with a dotted line with an open arrow uh, uh, and uh, a dependency type written on top of it. The possible dependency types between packages could be use dependency, import dependency, and a merge dependency. Okay, so this merge dependency is used to represent uh, merging of packages. So there may be uh, packages which are merged together at certain level in order to form a higher package, right? So they they do have a uh, a sol solo existence, right? But they are merged together into a certain uh, higher level package in order for uh, say distribution, etc. Right? So these are kind of dependencies that can exist in a package diagram. Finally, one last slide. I think it's the last slide. Uh, one last slide on uh, 
some lines about the way you should package elements together. It is very important that one should uh, package only classes which are logically related to each other. The program elements which are logically related to each other into a package, into a bundle, right? Use classes belonging to a framework or a layer catering to a certain uh, level of functionality are bundled together and, and are put together separately in order to emphasize that if you need to do this particular kind of task, this is where you will find uh, all the classes for doing this, right? Import this package and start using it. Right? If you need to uh, say interface your Java project with the backend database, then you need some uh, which consists of SQL uh, uh, library and some drivers kind of a thing in order to connect to that database. Right? So there is there is a set of package you just need to import into your files, into your Java project, and these will help you in order to uh, do the task that you would like to do, right? Similarly, classes uh, belonging to the same inheritance hierarchy are typically put into the same package, right? Because they are logically related to each other. They are always doing a related task. So it would not be a great idea to package such classes which belong to the same inheritance hierarchy into separate packages, right? Similarly, classes related to one another through creation or composition relationship are also put into the same package, right? Because it makes sense that they are related to each other, they should be in the same package. So intuitively, classes having high coupling often belong to the same package. So if there's a large uh, level of interaction that is going on between the class between two classes, that means they have a high coupling. They need each other to carry out a certain task. That means they are logically related and should belong to the same package, right? The lines are important uh, for understanding in working on a project of your own, right? So when that is the case, then you must understand which of the classes you should put into a particular package and which ones should not, how you should divide your classes. So whether it should be based on a layer pattern. So if you have uh, different layers in your architecture, so whether you should divide your classes uh, based on the layers that they are, uh, catering to or in what right? So these guidelines help you to uh, segregate, to divide your program elements uh, into different bundles, which are called packages, right? Questions, and then we'll take a break and then take up the questions later to the assignments. Uh, there's a question on dependency relationships. Do we need to represent dependency relationship using arrows notation? And the question is, is it really useful? Uh, uh, whether it is useful or not, maybe you could avoid uh, writing the type of relationship that is uh, occurring between the various packages. But yes, of course, if draw a dependency arrow, that would be really helpful to indicate that this particular package needs have dependency on the other package, right? So it might be packages which do not have dependency on each other, right? So you might, and that is quite frequent in Java, right? So there are already the most of the inbuilt existing packages, they do not need other packages, right? So if you are importing the math math package it doesn't need any other inbuilt packages for help so it doesn't have any other dependencies right if you draw the dependency it's well and good uh, you might not write the type of dependency but a simple arrow to represent the de uh, dependency relationship is a good idea Okay, many questions today on the package diagram. Not uh, not many people are also even happy to understand, to study about the package diagram. Um, 
uh, one question package maintains executable as well as document so when you uh, distribute right I, I know in case of java so if you distribute your uh, okay, it's only the class files that you get right the java files are not distributed so in depends if you are only give the binary version to the customer right you do not give the codes so you have to write how you want to distribute uh, you want to distribute in case you build Java project, right? So even your Java files are stored in packages, and when you build a Java project, your class files are also created in that same package hierarchy, right? So whatever is the package hierarchy, uh, package system that is followed by your Java files in your project, the same package structure will also be there in the class files, right? So you can choose to distribute only the class files to the customer. Then execute as well as documents, but they are separate. We'll take a break here, and uh, you are most wait waiting for the assignment questions, right? So I'll, uh, okay, uh, one quick thing about the next uh, session. Right, so those who are still to write the makeup examination, best of luck for that. And please make yourself available for the next session because we will start with design patterns, which is a, a very important topic. And we are not going to start with grasp patterns, right? Your uh, um, uh, lectures, they start with the grasp patterns. So we will, instead of starting with the grasp patterns, I will start with the gang of four patterns. Uh, and then we will take up grass patterns. Right? So please do join next time. And uh, I will five minutes break. We will join back for the question for the assignment. So I will just go through the assignment. What is uh, the expectation out of the assignment? As well as take up your query regarding the assignment and group formation. Right? Just five minutes break. 